This is the Mend It Paths podcast with Chadwick Hayward, episode number three. Welcome to MendItPaths.com. Let's get back to bed now. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me for the third episode of the Mend It Paths podcast. Today, we're speaking with Suzanne Miles, author of the book Fork It, Keys to Amazing Health. She's going to be telling us about her journey from facing a hysterectomy to saying yes to a new life. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining me, Suzanne. I found your inspirational journey on Forks Over Knives on the success stories there. Um, for people who haven't read it, can you give us a little bit of a background about where you were before your change and kind of what led to it? Well, hello, and thank you so much for having me. Yes, um, Forks Over Knives was a privilege to be on, uh, for sure. There was a, that was a big deal. Uh, however, the journey of my uh, vegan story started in 2011, uh, I was 54 years old at the time, and I was uh, seeking to have some different um, information about encroaching health problems at the time. So prior to 2011, I had, you know, grown up through the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and up until that point, living like everybody else. And at that point, 2011, I had a bit of an epiphany and took an about change to a plant-based lifestyle. Okay. And so what really um, inspired your change specifically? Were, were you facing any health issues or was it just that time or were you like, what made you start looking for uh, thinking that your diet was important? So I've always been interested in health, uh, wellness, and um, I always thought that I was pretty good with my diet and understanding uh, food. However, um, uh, what happened to me was that I actually was getting increasingly um, problematic issues. So every time I had to visit the doctor, it was always, oh, you've got high cholesterol. Oh, you could have a heart attack in 10 years time if you don't do this, 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 including taking, of course, statins were presented. Um, but also I had a growth. I actually had a, a fibroid. They're very common amongst women. And I had it for many years and it never, it got big, but it wasn't really, um, uh, dangerous is what I was told, but it was big and it wouldn't go away. So that's a non-cancerous growth on the uterus, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And they're very common, but I couldn't figure out why I had this because I just couldn't figure out why. So I spent probably a good eight years trying to f kind of control this or figure out how to get rid of it and nothing was working, nothing. And I did everything um, that I could find at the time and then also through my doctor and, and including uh, 2011, my second visit to a surgeon to talk about having a hysterectomy. Hmm. And um, well, that was my game changing point right there, right in your office. Yeah. So that, that was kind of what made you go out and, and renew your search or? Yeah. So what happened was, was that I just asked her, well, hey, here I am in my mid fifties. I'm looking at having a hysterectomy. What is the outcome? Oh, it's this, this, this. It's six months of recovery. It's, you know, hmm. uh, lots of pills in the future. And, and I've never been a pill fan. So I, I just said to her, it was like, it was like a, a light came in the room that day. And I said to her, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this with you. you I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to find a reason. There's a reason why I have quote unquote got this. And, and so if I've got it, I can get rid of it. And I'm going to find out why. And if I need to come back to you, I'll let, I will. But otherwise, I'm going to go see. And you wouldn't believe it, but pretty much that within that next few days anyway, we don't watch much TV. But I saw there was a show coming on, a documentary called The Last Heart Attack. And it came out on August 31st, 2011. It's presented by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And it featured people like Bill Clinton, Dr. Esselstyn, and all these, Dr. Bernard, all these people. And it was all about eating a plant-based lifestyle. And it's called The Last Heart Attack. Okay. And my husband and I just right then and there just went, let's do that. Because we didn't want to have, you know, as we're getting towards 60, we didn't want to have the health problems that we could see were coming, including we were packing on weight and all these things. So we saw the show. We decided right then and there, we've, we've lived this other way. We really want to see what our bodies can do for us. Let's see if we could lose some weight, maybe change the cholesterol, this and that. And lo and behold, it also changed the grip of the fibroid. Yeah. So just in case uh, people don't know, um, 
a hysterectomy is having your uterus surgically removed, correct? Yes. Yeah. And so, um, so what, what did you and your husband do after watching this video? Well, right away that night, we were pretty excited and we thought, well, we've each got to lose some weight was really the, the start of it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, so we just opened our cupboards and we got rid of everything we owned pretty much that was in the cupboard. Uh, we looked at labels more closely. We just suddenly were like, boom, we're going to try this. And we started right away. And right away, that was a long weekend, uh, the Labor Day long weekend. And right away, we were confronted with um, at a, you know, a picnic we went to with um, people offering us salamis and hams and cheese and things like that. Right away, we were practicing saying no thank you. And of course, right away, um, we started to build some unique power that we hadn't had before because yeah. we were now thinking differently. And I'll tell you, within three months, we were starting to see results and we really liked the results uh, that we were getting from weight loss to just feeling a little bit better and a little bit better. And I'm talking not lots of weight loss, but, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds, it was starting to shift, yeah. right? And we could feel. And as a result of that shift, I also noticed that this uh, fibroid was shaking up inside me and sort of starting to go away. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, pretty quick. So you threw out everything that was in your cupboards. What did you replace it with? Like, well, I'll tell you, it's, 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 uh, you know, I've been a vegan now for five years, more than five years. I'm just turned 59. So I'm really excited for the future. That's so I awesome. always say to people, you know, I'm in chapter 50. That's how I call it. But when I was in chapter one, it was all about starting. And starting often means that you have to have a new set of tools and a new set of thinking. And what was the way you used to show up is going to change, but you're going to make mistakes. So what we did was we sort of unknowingly were trying to mimic the old way. Okay, yeah. For example, I would buy like Daya cheese. Daya cheese is a vegan cheese, real good if you want to make a, a gluten-free grilled cheese. So we would do things like that. We used different, different products to make similar things from the old way we were eating. Okay, so you were just adapting uh, previous recipes. Yeah, adapting and looking more clearly at what we were buying and, and, and learning and, and making mistakes and not beating ourselves up and then learning and then moving forward. So now today is a whole different way. But at the beginning, it was very important to try to turn our, I call it our ship, so to speak, into what is, what are we going to eat? How does this look? What were we having before? Um, you, you tend to want to gravitate to that until you get further and further away from the way you were eating. Yeah, it, t it takes some time to change behavior. Yes. Awesome. Um, so I guess, how long would you say your transition took? Because right now you're, you're more focused on a whole food plant-based diet. Is that right? Or do you still stick with those um, type of products every now and then, the diet cheese or things like that? These days we eat a whole food, plant-based, raw food diet mostly. I'm not adverse to having a diet grilled cheese if I go out somewhere yummy, um, you know, but it's going to be gluten-free and it's going to be vegan, right? And so I'm not adverse to those little treats, but they really are few and far between because we notice even then that the more food that is produced, uh, we still don't even feel really great after it. You know what I mean? I do. So, so even though they're good and they have a place in the market um, and for, for restaurants and people wanting to build businesses, sure. But for me personally, I notice now five years on when I try to have something like that, it's okay, but I don't really feel as great as if I hadn't had it and I'd just gone and had my raw food. So... Um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a shift here and there, but, um, we manage just fine. So would you say you kind of, you'll indulge perhaps sometimes if you're going out, but you don't really take it into your home kind of thing? Not really. No. I mean, we don't fry anything. So for example, uh, we don't fry anything. So a grilled cheese needs to be fried. So, you know, yeah, it, it, but it's few and far between. I usually, if I'm going to go visit a restaurant, it's usually going to be a raw food, organic, vegan 
restaurant, okay. uh, which there's plenty around Vancouver. And indeed, there's plenty around the world. I've traveled extensively as a vegan in the last few years. And I've been just, just so excited to see what's going on around the world in terms of vegan. So have you seen a growth over that five-year period or... Oh, absolutely. We, I mean, we, when we started out, because one of the big things is that we've been so focused as a society on, uh, through marketing of all these companies to go to these big box stores. So one thing I highly recommend is that people start to get out of those stores because there's lots of other stores that are ready for you and, and waiting to give you a whole other group of products that are better for you. And and those products are, are worldwide. So there's been a big growth, in my opinion, since I started um, to uh, welcome people that want more information. I don't shop there if you can't tell me if those are genetically modified or not. If you can't tell me they are or they aren't, I'm not shopping there, hmm. you see. And so I started to ask a lot more questions and more questions I asked that more led me away from where I didn't want to go to where I did want to go, where people could answer those questions. So yeah, there's a, there's a big growth uh, globally I've discovered. Fantastic. So you would say it's it's getting easier all the time to to eat when you're traveling. You bet. I'll tell you, I, I went to uh, Sydney, Australia twice last year, and um, um, I flew with Air Canada, and they have fantastic nonstop flights down to there, and I asked for a vegan meal, and I got a vegan meal. Did I need to eat it all as a vegan? Not necessarily, but was it nice to have? You bet, because they actually did a pretty good job of offering me a vegan meal. That's and, awesome. and I was the first one served, which I thought was fascinating. So I told everybody, see, it pays to be a vegan. You're the first one served. They all laughed. That's awesome. <laughs> so I try to make it fun and light, right? Absolutely. You'll. What's the expression? You'll uh, win more bees with honey than vinegar. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So you've obviously had a lot of success with this lifestyle, and you've even written a new book recently called Fork It. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and what it entails? You bet. Well, I, I um, have had amazing results of being a vegan. I did not expect the results I've had when I started five years ago. Indeed, I've lost almost 70 pounds. Congratulations. Uh, the, the fibroid is not on my mind at all. Uh, I don't have cholesterol issues. I, um, I have way more fun time because my health is so much better now. Um, but it took the first year was really the big year. After that, you know, you were much more armed and ready to face more and more deeper uh, changes that you might want to do that will just come quite naturally. So um, I wrote a book. Um, and that um, was so exciting because I was now, uh, I guess, um, let me see, three years into my vegan lifestyle when this book appeared to me. And um, I wrote it. It's not a cookbook. It's a book to help people understand what's going on with the food system, to understand the dangers of, of things like sugar, to learn about how to resist temptations of a, of a system that's very aggressive and coming after you and your family to buy their products, um, how to understand that the best way to have optimal health is to understand that you need an alkaline body. And so my book is really giving an overall kind of conversation in easy, in easy to read format to inspire people to go, right, I always knew that, you know it, but this will kind of confirm it from my research. So I talk about genetically modified foods and, and uh, dangers of of uh, certain types of foods, but then I also talk about the inspiring foods that are available, which is which is a much much bigger um, system than the one being thrust upon people and making most people unwell. What do you mean by bigger? Bigger in what way? There's more food. Ah, uh, the variety. The variety, yeah. The, the 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 variety of food, the plethora of food, the the culinary food experience that you can encounter as a vegan, as a as a vegan living a vegan lifestyle is massive. You will never go hungry ever. 
um, you know, from mango to bok choy to sunflower seeds and tomatoes to avocados and almond butter and pineapples and uh, cashew milk, sesame seeds. And there's so many superfoods and, and, and wonderful foods, even right where you live in the zone you live in. Yeah, I, I found that as well. That uh, variety of meals has definitely increased for me since I've uh, adapted a whole food plant-based diet. And and especially what I notice is like the color of food is more appealing where there's like you get the reds, the yellows, the greens, the purples, whereas before that process stuff was that same bland orangish color that it's it's really a whole new world. It's a whole new world. And it was, a, and you know, I proud, I was prided myself on eating what I thought prior to this change, what I thought was a thought out, thoughtful diet that I fed my daughters and myself. And I always thought I ate well, but indeed, indeed that eating well out of that other system that I had been living in, Ablete was, which was also mostly vegetarian, was still not making me well as I got older. And I just couldn't figure out why until I had saw that show and just went, bam, we're doing that. So did you change anything else in your lifestyle at that time? You know, we decided that we were old enough that we could change everything. Did it come overnight? No. Did we just, you know, rip it like a Band-Aid? And, and no. But we did in terms of drawing the line in the sand of no no animal products, nothing with a mother. So that was the line. Okay. And, and that was a line that you had to face because we've, we've put animals into everything. I mean, bottles and bits and pieces of their bodies are in all kinds kinds of things that just after a, just blew us out for a period of time. Um, but uh, we've changed many, many things in terms of um, skin care. You know, I use, uh, I don't buy any of that stuff anymore. I just use natural, easy to use skin care like coconut oil. I make my own mm. with almond oil and rosehip oil and so many other things. So we actually, over time as well, moved away more and more and more, <clears throat> excuse me, from the chemical system. So now we don't, for example, use any chemicals when we wash our clothes. Okay. Now we're not sleeping on chemicals. We're not wearing chemicals as much as we can control right well yeah if if you go to a shopping mar store there's you go in the washroom there's going to be chemicals in their soap or something but there's not really much you can do about that of course right. and i like to be out there in the world i'm out in the world i'm out there but you know i can control the controllables and that's what i can control within my own sphere and outside of that you can educate people and that's what my book is about is to educate people what is possible for you maybe why you haven't been feeling so great and what you can do about it. That's awesome. So if it, you've emphasized a few times that it it really was a transition for you like the the switch to veganism no animal products was an overnight thing but um the transition to more healthful living was more of a process than it was a uh, light switch type of decision. So do you have any tips for people who are just uh, maybe on the edge of making that decision from themselves or, or just getting started? I highly recommend that you do a plant-based lifestyle, a whole food, vegan, plant-based lifestyle. In my opinion, it is the most powerful thing I've ever done for my body. It raises the question, what can my body do for me, you yes. see? And I'm going to tell you, I have never been so healthy in my whole life except when I was very young. I'm talking teenagerhood. And, but, but, but between then and my mid-50s, a whole bunch of living got happening, which is great. But at the same time, it all led me to what I would call a kind of a... a, a you know, it's now or never point. Okay. And so I recommend people stop that, stop their behaviors before they get to now or never and see if they had a plant-based lifestyle starting right away, which anybody can do, you could actually soar. I mean, here I am at 59 years old. I've learned to run again. I, I run 10 kilometers pretty much every day now. That's awesome. Which I never did before. So yesterday, I'll tell you, I did a run. Then I went for a swim in the ocean because it was a beautiful day. And then last night before it got dark, I went for a 10-kilometer bike ride. So you can call me a triathlete now. <laughs> <laughs>
And so that that wouldn't have been a possibility before, or you just didn't didn't want to do that before. Or? You know, it, it, I I feel now that I've broken through a system that was actually trying to lock me in. And I think the chemical system, the meat industry, the, the 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 sickness and the pain we're all ingesting it is blocking our lives, and it's making us sick by by virtue of putting so many chemicals into us. First of all, an incorrect. Um, food that's just got nothing nutrition wise and as a result you don't feel good in many many realms you can't even describe until you actually get back to the clarity which is really kind of how you were born yeah. so so um, you know yeah it's 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 a very um, awakening uh, position and and you get a lot of power from this position because by virtue of, I'll tell you a quick story. I used to work in, in a great office and they always had, you know, pizza for sales week and birthday cake for birthday week and all these things. And they bring all these awful foods there. And, and I never said anything, you see. I just observe now okay. I never was uh, said anything so but but what I did do is it would come around offering me a piece and I always said oh no thank you not for me and at first at the beginning it was you want to tell people because that's what why vegans I think get misrepresented because you've learned something so valuable you can't wait to tell everybody absolutely and so, right and that's 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 there's a rub there for people because what you're doing is you're breaking another person's belief system that's right well you've you've had so much benefit that you're just eager to spread the word or get people join this look at the benefit you can have but people aren't receptive to that like you said they're not and so what happens is because you're breaking their belief but what I noticed was that I always said, no, no, thank you to the cake. No, and, the, and you know, people, all oh, right, you don't need animals. So you get all that stuff, right? But I just stood strong by myself. And as a result, people notice that more than when you dive in with the collective group. So by Absolutely. standing out as alone and saying no and just watching them all eat this and thinking, wow, you guys are all going to want to buy a copy of my book in three years because <laughs> you're all going to have a heart attack. Totally. But, but secondly, what happened after that, and over time, and it didn't take much, one day, all the girls come in with um, a magic bullet. They've got all the frozen, they went and got spinach and kale and berries and milk. And oh. They've been watching me, you see, but they've never participated. And I never really said, you should. Instead, I just did what I was doing and I stayed with it. And that's what I'm talking about, the power. You get a lot more power by just remaining and staying the course and, and standing because eventually people are noticing and they're seeing your success and now they're seeing you can say no, wow. And you know, and then suddenly they're like, I'm gonna do what she's doing. And you've already, then you've inspired someone and right away you know that you've inspired and planted a seed and it's working and off they go. I just loved that. That's so encouraging, actually. It's uh, I, I've said it as well that I've given up on confronting people who post um, terrible recipes that are for you, and it's it's people won't change until they're ready to change, and you're really just increasing your own frustration and stress if you try to change people's viewpoints. You're you're much better off to lead by example, and eventually they will see that you're getting healthier, and they are not, and probably going in the other direction. So um, eventually they will start asking themselves those questions of wh why, why them and not me or why me and not them. And that will enable them to reflect and change their own beliefs. And that's really where y you can step in and be helpful because if a person isn't looking to read your book, they're never going to buy your book. They have to be asking themselves the questions of um, how can I get healthier before they take that first step. That's right. And that's exactly what happened to me. But I was forced at it by looking at a surgeon. And my eyes, I'm sure, were just like, ah, uh, no, 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 no. You're not, I'm not having major surgery. No, 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 no. I'm going to find out why. And, and now I know why. It was the food. And then now my whole topic is around it's the food. And what can we do to empower you more to have better food starting at any age, starting at, at baby, baby time even. And wow, I mean, everything changed for me. My skin is better. I have less wrinkles. My hair went from gray back to blonde. That's awesome. 
it, 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 like all of my premature uh, aging stalled. And one of the greatest things is my husband, um, it started with me too. So we've done this together and uh, he's had massive results as well. He's reduced his weight also about 70 pounds. He's 63 wow. years old. He drives a big rig. He handles thousands of pounds of materials a day as a vegan. He's a solid. And I'll tell you um, uh, I'm, uh, what I was trying to say was that, you know, we, we, uh, we uh, just learned so many uh, important parts about this uh, plant-based diet and um, the gifts. I, I say vegan, the gift that keeps on giving because he's, we've, like I was saying before, we've, our wrinkles have, have disappeared. Our, our hair is lighter. He was balding. He's got a full head of hair coming back. Oh, that's There's awesome. There's so many amazing positive uh, results that we just love and cannot um, express enough to people that the closer you eat from the earth, the better you will be, the more exciting a life you can have. Because one thing we want to demonstrate is that you don't have to be aging in a decrepit, sick way. Well, it's not a normal part of aging, absolutely. It is not. It's a story. And it's a story that many, many of us have bought into. And it's not our fault. It's, it's, the, it's the marketing of the idea that at certain points, these are certain behaviors that have to occur. One is aging. And that's not true. That's right. Well, the, the food industry is a trillion dollar industry, right? So they're, oh, yeah. they're making lots of money marketing uh, processed food that oh, is yeah. not healthful. And you you can't patent broccoli. So there is no big broccoli lobby, but there is a big Mars lobby or a chocolate bar lobby in general. Oh, yeah. Right? And the thing is, is that they're, that they, um, they're feeling the pinch somewhat because there is an awakening going on. But at the same time... Um, they, they're, it's, it's leading everybody to this illness, you see, because when I was even 30, just 30 years ago, let's say, well, I never knew anybody that was full of all these problems health-wise that we're talking about in today's world. Yeah. I never knew anybody. I didn't know anybody that had anything. No, everyone knows something. Now, now, it's like it's, it's, it's a rite of passage that you're supposed to get this disease. Well, we disagree. So one of our big goals is we want to show that aging is, can be a really youthful, athletic, happening process. And we want to show that as we move from 60 plus, right? Yeah. And it's, I think it's a great, I'll tell you something, the most people that have purchased my book are young people, 30 under. And and guys, men, way more men have been interested in my book than women, and way more young people under thirty. They they're blown out that I'm sixty, just about. Yeah, it's that's that's incredible. They're blown out. What? You're sixty? You don't look like anyone I know who's sixty. I've never met anybody like you and your husband who's sixty. People say this to us all the time. Well, by sixty, you're supposed to have the laundry list of uh, medical See? conditions, heart disease, and uh, early stages of dementia, perhaps. And, right? Like it's just not necessary. That's right. And so what I've noticed now, and I'm so excited, is that I have not only grown up through the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, and now to today, but those years were gifts that I can still share with people because we didn't live in a plastic society meat was not on the plate your mother never said eat your meat it was eat your eat your veggies you know it was different right and and nobody was overweight nobody i didn't know anybody who had obesity or diabetes or anything mm -hmm. it wasn't like today so now i have two daughters and i look at them and i'm, I'm really nervous for their health right so and i see that and i'm like well wow i mean i don't take any prescription pills I don't take any prescriptions at all my eyes have gotten so blue I can't even believe it that's just incredible it's just an amazing thing but but what I keep trying to reiterate to people is you've got to stay with it this is something you stay with it's not a diet this is this is a way of living and it means you have to start and you've got to lay down a foundation that's going to maybe be challenging because you're going to say no to certain things and one thing I wanted to reiterate about food and, and um, what we were talking about earlier is that a lot of these predetermined um, 
social events or seasons or festivities that we're supposed to attach ourselves to are around eating meat. So we're talking Christmas, Thanksgiving, the Halloween, full of holiday, candy, yeah. candy, all these holiday things. And the first blot that anybody will come to uh, who's starting off will be one of those pointers. And those are the first places where you'll suddenly go, oh, I don't need animals. How am I going to do Christmas? How can I go? Okay, I'm going to make a different meal around that. Well, maybe the people you're staying with don't like it. These types of things. So you now are getting into a rub situation. Not everybody's into it, right? That's right. And this is where a lot of people fall back because you you hit these places that are tra so-called traditions. Well, we spent the first couple of years um, sort of, navigating that if you want to say call it that we were like what what are we going to do here yeah now what are we going to do how are we going to handle this well the first year we kind of handled it but over time you start to go actually no this is this is all part of that it's part of the system yeah it's how we put it together so now we just don't participate and well that's got its own set of of amazing freedom in implications because you have to break through and go, maybe I don't participate in that anymore. And maybe I'm glad about that. And wow, I'm actually, I'm really glad about that. And, but it takes time. So what I try to encourage people is to understand, start at the beginning, one step at a time, definitely stay with a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Learn to say no kindly. You can have the cake. What? You don't want the cake? I can have the cake. I'm choosing to not have the cake. That's right. And because what happens is even in the office, people start to step back and they start to go, but I don't know you anymore. Who are you? You've changed. Yes, you're right. I've changed. Watch me. I'm going to lose 40 pounds and I'm going to rock. Watch me. And, and what happens is, is that separation occurs. You do over time become an inspiring motivator, but yeah. first you got to meet your own, your own um, things that you have to overcome. Well, and it's important to remember that you will make mistakes along yes. that path and don't let the last bad choice impact no. the next good one that's correct like right? we don't eat wheat for example now we didn't eat wheat because we just decided well we're not going to eat any bread so it has to be gluten-free then i found out now years later that it's not necessarily the wheat that's the problem it's in its own structure but it's the glyphosate that's being used sprayed on it all from roundup and our friends yeah. who we all know so glyphosate in its own right, is probably causing half of everybody's illnesses, you know, from eczema to... Well, there's there's very few people actually allergic to gluten. That's correct. Right? There's very few people. So it, if if more people are having a reaction, then it's it's something else. And yeah, there's there is a lot of pesticides used on wheat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's just so many things, right? But what I say to people is, hey, if you have a piece of bread and you happen to have it by mistake and you don't feel good because it's now four, five, six months, even a year in, you don't feel so good because you had made a wrong choice, acknowledge that you made that wrong choice. And, and well, you might do it again. You might do it a few times until you kind of go, actually, I'm not doing that anymore. So we've been through those types of cycles where we've, you know, had certain things like we went from well we don't want to have potato chips well they can't be going to be non-gmo they got to be this they got to be that. eventually we gave away the chips you yeah. see but but you don't beat yourself up you keep moving in the direction because eventually this is one thing i've learned over five years is that eventually your body just starts to say hey i'm done with that Absolutely. and it just and it just goes away because because everything inside is getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. So as soon as you put something that's not supposed to be there uh, into this super functioning machine, suddenly it just goes, oh, I don't feel so good with that. And you just intuitively know. Uh, absolutely. I, I remember early in my journey when uh, I was waiting for my wife for something and I ended up giving into the food craving and going to McDonald's and getting some French fries. And, and right. I'm like, well, they're plant-based, so it's not meat. I'm, I'm good. And it was like three <laughs> fries in and I'm like, I can't do this. Like these are nothing but salt and grease and I no longer enjoy these. And so right. as time goes, it gets easier to make those choices because you do get that feedback. That's correct. Because what one thing I've learned is that, you know, our bodies are clogged up for, mine was clogged up from 50 years of living. Yeah. And suddenly, and suddenly I got to a point, it's not because of my age, it's because it caught up with me. And I learned that in the last heart attack. In the last heart attack, which is on YouTube, Sanjay Gupta. 
they talk about the fact that that everything you've eaten from the minute you were born is leading up to that sickness today. And they talk about that. So you can reverse it just like you can when you quit smoking. You can reverse things. Our bodies are so amazing. You can reverse these things. But you have to have the will and the desire and and the fortitude. And and, and it, then, then suddenly you've done something like I've done. I never anticipated writing a book when I was 58. I never even saw that coming. But here it is. Suddenly you've done something amazing and you're helping other people. Wow. Now you even have a new career or here I am talking to you and you're, you're expanding in this expansive um, space, which is so exciting. What's a whole new world? It's a whole new world. Yeah. Your, your natural, uh, as you were saying, like your natural state is health. You just need to give your body the right uh, raw materials in order to achieve that. That's correct. Like these days, like I said, even in winter, we'll we'll have a small warm soup. But I use chickpea miso for the base, for mm. example. Uh, and I use just a few lentils. And mostly in a little soup we would have would be a lot more of the chickpea broth with turmeric and black pepper. And it's more root-based now. So yeah. there'll be some ginger in there and some leek and maybe a couple of... Um, of legumes for a bit of protein in there. And otherwise it would be that small bowl with a small raw uh, board, for example, just some cucumber, uh, carrot, perhaps avocado, stuff like that. That sounds delicious. Yeah. So it's simple, right? And you can eat very simply, but high nutrition. And then through the day, we just graze from everything from a super powered smoothie right through to eating some seeds and nuts and things like that through the day. So that you feel really good all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. So you mentioned you had uh, two daughters. Have they adopted the lifestyle or what did they say about the change in you and your husband? Oh, they're so excited. They're so excited. Um, they love seeing us healthy, my daughters. One of them, uh, the youngest one is 20, and she uh, actually adopted a vegan lifestyle from 15 years old. Okay. Now, this is, yeah. So now for her, that was a, um, that was really big. It was big for us too, but for her, she just grabbed it and she was just like, I'm going to do this. And she's had amazing results from, confidence building to um, learning about uh, social pressures, peer pressure. Uh, you know, come on, have that pizza. Come on, what are you doing? You're not having the pizza. You're not having the chicken wings. All these things that she had to also stand alone with. So she developed her own set of confidence while watching others kind of behave in more group mentality, which she didn't even put that together at the time, but she'd tell us about it, right? Yeah. And, um, and right through to... Um, you know, she probably made some mistakes. She probably cheated here and there just out of peer pressure, but mostly she stuck with it. So she, her skin improved. The acne went away. Uh, she learned about her hygiene better. She learned much more about the world that she's emerging world that she's coming into now and the problems of the environment really bother her. Yeah. So she really feels like she can have a role in, um, in uh, you know, saving animals and in participating in a better uh, environmental uh, uh, stewardship for the, for the, for the world. And uh, so she's been really interesting to observe in that way, this one. Excellent. So uh, for you, it's been more health basis and, and you see her adapting it on more of an environmental animal welfare type of uh, viewpoint. I would say, yeah, I would see her being more interested in, in, uh, she doesn't like like slaughterhouses and we do every year, which coming up October 2nd is the fast for, against slaughter. We did that last year. It's a 24 hour fast. We, we personally, myself, I fast every day for 16 hours, but the fast against slaughter is a great way to, to see what's going on. So there, it, there's over a billion animals, uh, slaughtered, um, you know, yearly and, and millions a day. Isn't that just uh, in the worldwide. U.S.? It's just in the U.S. It's crazy. Yeah. So we can't have a peaceful society while we keep inflicting pain on others. And this is really important. And one of the things I wanted to reiterate talking about environment is 
once you start getting clearer, and this is what we noticed, especially with the youngest uh, daughter, is that she really got it more like her awareness became more aware of environment. Suddenly she was like, plastic bottles, can't have plastic bottles. Oh, cigarette butts are all over the street. Oh my God, people have gone crazy at a party and now there's fighting and it's, and it's, where's it coming from? Where's all this coming from? All this, all this lack of care. And, and, and it's not just because you're young. It's actually, it's actually behavioral challenges coming from a lot of what you're consuming. So she wanted to, like we did, have better opportunity to be more um, in tune with the environment and what's going on. And I think vegan really uh, plays a role in that. I got it. Can I tell you something quickly? Of course. I've been a vegan for five years and one month. I have calculated through a special calculator, hold your breath, I have personally, just me, according to the calculator, saved 1,855 animals. Wow. I've saved 5,194 square meters of forest that hasn't been taken down for more animal farming. Oh, my goodness. I've saved 7,724,000 liters of water, mostly gone for animals. I've also saved 33,576 kilos of grain. And I've saved 16,881 kilos of CO2. Wow, that's that's incredible. That's just me. Now imagine when you compound that by two people, 10 people, 1,000, 10,000, million people. We could have an amazing world. Absolutely. And the problem with all this, uh, all these talks and climate change and just all these diseases and all this thing, in my opinion, it boils down to the fact that we're just way out of balance. And, and, and a lot of that has come down to the marketing machine of, of how food is presented to us. Because I remember food being, supermarkets were small. They didn't have 15,000 items in them, first of all. Yeah. They had oranges and apples and things that were grown locally and were for you here. Well, before your supermarket, you got your uh, food from your farm or in the woods by foraging, or right? Supermarkets are something that developed within the last hundred years. What happened before then? For sure, I remember my mother in the '60s here in Vancouver, and it gets cold here. She grew. My parents grew all their own food. They had a huge freezer. We ate from that freezer all winter until the next spring when they planted to get rhubarb, asparagus, potatoes, tomatoes. They did everything. She froze. Everything everything. But then came along the idea that, you know, um, you've got to work now and, and the kids are going to, you know, and it just, it just all changed and it all got taken away. And suddenly one day they, they stopped gardening. Well, it's so much more convenient to just you buy know? TV dinner. That's it. And so that started to come in and off it slowly went, right? And then this, these businesses started to see that, wow, we could actually, wow. And of course, then the, the other side of it is, wow, come on in here. And I just don't, I just don't like the, I just don't like this sick, decrepit idea of disease as something that's partaking in my life if I can stop it. And so the only way I can see it. Um, being having a really good healthy life as best as I can handle and take on is to have a whole food plant-based vegan lifestyle look what I've saved in water in the earth forest animals just me well and you've saved yourself surgery and I've saved myself surgery I've saved myself the only reason and the only time I go to a doctor now honestly is because I've fallen off my bike and I need a stitch or something like that <laughs> Well, acute care will always be needed, right? It's different, but but in terms of I have I don't go anymore at all. I don't they stopped calling me because I said no, I'm not coming. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I've began to trust my doctor a little less. They they've given some bad advice, so Yeah, I don't mind them. They they have a role in life, I guess, but they could have a better role, but that's another topic for another day. Absolutely. For, for me, I wanted to look after my own I wanted to find my own solutions and I found them. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been you're, a pleasure speaking with welcome. you. Welcome. I really enjoyed talking with you today, and I really and I really hope that everybody uh, has a nice, healthy green drink, drinks lots more water, tries a little bit less meat and a lot more plants, and gets out there and supports farmers and farmers markets and 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 grabs their health back. It's waiting for you. See what your body can do for you. It is amazing. And move more. Move a lot more because you will. 
Uh, super quick before we finish, I wasn't running prior to this because I had too much weight. No wonder I wasn't running. Yeah. Right? Now I run. Now I could run. I could easily compete, I'm sure. That's fantastic. <laughs> so if someone's listening now and they want to read your book, where can they find it? Uh, well, um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, my name is Suzanne Miles. My book is called Fork at Keys to Amazing Health. And you can find it on the website at www.forkitbook.com. Dot com and I mail it out all over the world all the time. Some famous people have my book. I wanted to let you know um, because last year I got to be uh, interviewed on Tony Robbins and Richard Branson's stages in Sydney, Australia. I flew for that and I was so excited. Uh, so they have a copy of my book. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, as does I sent one to Paul McCartney and Michelle Pfeiffer and I sent them all kinds of of interesting people, James Cameron and all these types of people. Uh, uh, you know who has a copy of my book and he's a world famous athlete is J Novak Djokovic. He's a world famous tennis player. He's a vegan and him and his wife have opened a vegan restaurant in Monte Carlo and Fork It Book is there. That's incredible. Well, I wish you lots of continued success and, and hopefully uh, you can show the path to many more people. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Take care. You too. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks for listening to the Mend It Paths podcast at www.menditpaths.com. If you've enjoyed the show, please subscribe. And if you care, share. See you all next time. Visit menditpaths.com and get back to bed. Now.